Hi, welcome to the lecture on Chapter 6. A little bit about uh, AP, uh, the Wireless LAN AP uh, hardware and mounting. Uh, I've posted some videos uh, that I'll look at, but you also want to make sure that uh, when we get the, the sites that are managing our certification here, that you look at their sites too. So, what's covered in this? Well, basically, uh, if you're looking at the objectives covered, um, it look it looks at the capabilities of the access points. Um, and some of these really become less important, but um, as far as ones that you probably deal with the most is is what kind of objectives, what kind of how do you mount them? how do you where do you put them? And then uh, how could you power them up uh, both uh, directly or uh, through power over Ethernet? Uh, so if you look at features and functions of an AP, uh, there are so many different manufacturers, different access point hardware configurations available because um, vendors are providing them for uh, small office, home office, uh, enterprise grade market. And, and they sell their AP based on, you know, features and capabilities. Uh, as a certified wireless technician, you need to be familiar with some of the features and capabilities that help uh, in that selection. And because you may be able to ask, uh, be asked to an opinion as far as which AP. Um, hopefully they've got a planner that's in, that knows a lot about APs too. But you also want to make sure you understand that you may be asked for your opinion. Now, vendors often specify um, these features in their product data sheets. So you want to be very comfortable looking at an access point and looking what features are available. Um, features include uh, which what's their physical, the PHY that's supported. Uh, the data rates, the radios, the number of bands, uh, what kind of output power. Uh, what kind of operational modes are available? Uh, can you handle multiple SSIDs? Uh, what about guest access? So there's a whole lot of things that um, that spec sheet goes through. Um, the other thing you want to make sure when you, when you look at uh, an AP, look at the physical connection. Uh, it, it'll tell you if it's got power. Uh, are the uh, Ethernet uh, ports, are they powered up? Are they working? You'll get an LED on those. You'll get an LED based on if which band is running, 2.4 gigahertz or 5.0 gigahertz. Uh, some have a lock that to, for security purposes. On the back side, there's usually a reset button. There's mounting bracket information or ports. Uh, you'll have more than likely two Ethernet ports, power over Ethernet ports, and uh, a straight power connector that you can plug it in uh, directly into AC-DC power. Uh, so it's when you, when you pick an AP, you want to double check what external features are available so that we, and when you see an LED, what does it mean? If it's green, if it's yellow, if it's not functioning, if it's flashing, um, each of the manufacturers in their specifications will tell you what what that information has. Uh, so here's just a, a, a general spec sheet. Uh, this is a Ian Genesis uh, model, and it basically tells you what standards it applies. It tells me how much memory that it has because these things are are routers. Uh, so. Uh, if you remember back on your Net 125 and Net 126 days, they ha have so much memory, so much flash memory, so much read-only memory, so that you can tell what's, so you can tell based on what kind of operating system you're going to run and how much data it can store. Uh, the antenna, is it external? Is it internal? What is its DBI? Remember what DBI is. Think back on our internal, our internal channels, our antenna ch chapter. Um, the physical ac 
interface. So this is now this now you're talking about the the Ethernet ports or the you know what is it? You know, what are the interfaces that you have access to for this AP? Uh, in this case, this example shows you there's two uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. Uh, so it, it tells you that because of its link aggregation, it can get two gigabit throughput. It's got two LAN ports. Um, it supports what? Power over Ethernet input. One lets you do data pass input. One's a reset. One's a power connector. So you got to make sure you understand what those interfaces are. What the LED indicators are, in this case, tells you a little bit about the power, the wireless LAN, which, you know, band it's in. Uh, and then the power source. Now, the power source can say, hey, I can give you DC in. I can give you I-80211-3AT. 80 so what's that? Power over Ethernet. Uh, so it gives me a couple of different options. And then it also tells you, hey, this manufacturer, this all could be either mounted on the ceiling or on the wall. So that tells you a little bit about the antenna, the configuration, because what did that end it? Up above the antenna says is what? It's an internal omni. You remember that's 360 degrees, roughly. So that you can choose, you know, how you're going to mount that. If I mount it on the ceiling or mount it on the wall, uh, you have some choices you want to make. Now, a little bit more on the on the radio so now it tells you what i've got a uh, operating frequency so it's something i run i've got dual radios so that means i can run both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz range um, this is operating only from an access point so it isn't acting as a controller uh, or anything like that it gives you the frequency ranges it can it can handle it tells you the transmit power uh, at both frequencies, what it can transmit. Uh, it also tells you the number of radio chains and the spatial streams. So think back on your antenna section. This, you remember that the colon tells you, so it's four by four colon four. So you got four transmit, four receive, and you got four spatial stream. That colon and the four tells you the number of spatial streams. Uh, it's telling you it's using uh, multiple in, multiple out. So I'm transmitting off of multiple antennas. So it's telling you how many spatial streams are being used for the different types. So if it's a single client, if it's multiple device, it's telling you that. It tells you which data rates it supports. So based on which protocol you want to run, you're going to run 802.11ac, 802.11n. Uh, those are choices you have. It tells you uh, which radios it can support. It, it can tell you uh, which channelization it can run. So if it's using 802.11n, it can use the very high throughput protocol, which allows you to use 40 gigahertz, 40 megahertz channel. Uh, so which modulation so these spec sheets tell a lot about what we've gone through now some enhanced features uh, that an ap may offer is um, many will require if based on where you're located what kind of office is uh, guest access which means i can connect to the land in a public facility um, you know shopping centers hotels uh, corporate offices, things like that. I can get access to the internet, but not access to my uh, data that's on my own server. Uh, now, traditionally, uh, APs have supported multiple SSIDs. Now, keep in mind that for every SSID, remember, I am gonna broadcast that beacon out several times a second, so the more uh, multiple SSID you're using, um, it does have an impact on your performance. Uh, you'll probably see a couple of questions uh, on the certification exam on one of the best ways to um, allow multiple users to touch your access point, but instead of having a guest 
a guest SSID, maybe you want a captive um, portal page. Uh, and a captive portal pages are just uh, a first touch point with users trying to access your uh, internet over, over a guest SSID. Uh, and this uh, portal page uh, will help add uh, workflow on board the guest uh, to the network. Um, it probably usually starts with a login page followed by a welcome page redirecting um, you know, to the original destiny, allowing for a little bit of authentication. Maybe it's a enter the room number of the hotel you checked into. You get, they give you, a, when you check, checked in a hotel, they says, okay, here's the uh, SSID, here's your password, uh, so that this way they can make sure that your affiliated now won't give you access to everything. But it gives you kind of a look and feel of a, a web page uh, look. Yeah, so it, oops, still, I want to go back here a little bit because other than you want to make sure that also some of the other features, I could have guest authentication. Uh, I can customize that captive port of, portal page to uh, make sure the guest authentication, have they enrolled? Are they actually members of the hotel? Uh, it could be a one-time password. It could be uh, uh short message service, uh, maybe some paid access, whatever the case may be. Um, so some APs will allow you to have that. Some will have the capability to allow you to generate random access codes or passwords uh, that can be used as vouchers uh, to help guest authentication. Uh, it Some of them will actually allow you for tr guest trafficking, you know, traffic monitoring or quality of service. Um, you know, this is usually isolated offering just to the guest, but it's a way of vendors including options you know, on a per SSID or per bandwidth contract. So basically, I'm willing to pay a little bit more money to get more bandwidth or I'll take the free service and get lower bandwidth because I just want to check my email. I don't care. Um, so it's allowing people to trap you know just monitor their traffic they get a choice of traffic and the quality of service so when you log in uh, you make sure that you you give this client what it's asking for what the customer's looking for and then you also have guest user logging uh, where it actually uh, the, the captive portal uh, registration forms some kind of authentication um, but uh, maybe like such your social logins or um, if you're logged in internally to an AP, uh, it can uh, use external databases to gather more information about the client. Uh, so just keep in mind that when you're looking at APs, some of this stuff does come into play. Now, some of the things you want to think about is your AP power. Uh, and basically here you're seeing which power based on which channel so what kind of operation mode I'm in, which wireless mode I'm in, what channel mode I'm in, uh, and then which channel configuration uh, and transmit power. Sometimes you can adjust that transmit power to help redefine uh, the coverage, the maximum output coverage you want to make sure. So based on where your access point is and how much uh, you want that signal to, to transmit, you may not want to go into the next office, so you may want to power it down, throttle it down a little bit so it stays just within your office or your hotel room or whatever. Uh, you can adjust that. So uh, keep in mind that sometimes your access point will allow you to change that, that output power. Um, now, as far as uh, power over Ethernet, uh, some of your SoHo uh, APs uh, are sold to con consumer and most of us just have a, a plug for an outdoor, you know, just a wall adapter. Uh, but enterprise APs, uh, whether they're standalone or managed, have the capability of drawing power over Ethernet, power over Ethernet, P-O-E, which is often uh, shipped without a power adapter 
or without or with a power over internet power injector only. Um, so you got to pay attention to what it's being sent. You know, what are you getting uh, for this? Uh, vendors now give both options. Uh, uh, first press preference is usually just power over Ethernet, and a second uh, is you know wall plug power. But depending on the processing power and the other hardware requirements of the AP, uh, you need to make sure you understand the power. You know what is the proper power over Ethernet source to power that Ethernet uh, to power that AP over the Ethernet. Uh, so uh, you want to make sure that you're in compliance with local and building codes. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not trying to put a uh, standard wall power in plenum areas or under, you know, the, those drop ceilings. The stuff that's above that drop ceiling is the plenum. Uh, most building codes will not allow you to put uh, standard wall power in, in those. So you'd have to use power over Ethernet. Uh, so there's a couple of different uh, options. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you understand what's available to you. Now, there's two power over Ethernet standards. There's the 802.3AF. It's the older standard. Uh, you see that it's used for 802.11A, B, and G, and sometimes N. And then it's because it only offers 15.4 watts of transmit power, but only 12.95 watts is received. Uh, so, and it does require CAT 3, 5, or higher. So you can do a CAT 6 or a CAT 7 uh, cable. Now, the 803, 802.3 AT is a newer standard. It runs on part of 802.11N and 802.11AC. Um, it has uh, a max received power of 25.5. So out of all these numbers you're getting thrown at, you want to make sure you know that 8023AF is only at 12.95 watts received and 8023AT is 25.5 watts received. So you want to make sure you understand those two. Um, now remember that if uh, you've got a long cable runs, um, your access point may not, it may power up, but it may not function correctly. So you wanna make sure you're within that 100 meter cable run uh, to make sure you're specifying at least as far as the Cat5 uh, or Cat5E standards are concerned. You want to make sure you stay within that range because if you've got a power of Ethernet and it goes too long, you may not have enough power to uh, have that AP work. It may not power up at all, or it may power up, but may not function the way you want it to. Now, in some cases, uh, when you've got what they call thin APs, you got it. A thick AP, which is, hey, I'm controlling everything. I've got all the power, all the memory, and I'm making all the decisions. With a thin AP or a uh, controller-based or a cloud-based architecture, the AP just has just enough to process the radios, but it doesn't have anything as far as updates or managers or monitoring the AP, how it's performing. Uh, so what you can and can't get away with is um, whether it's autonomous all by itself, controller-based or cloud-based, you've got to make sure what manufacturers, what features are available, what monitoring can and can't be done. Um, so that's just something you just got to take of. So when you're doing AP, you got to make sure, am I getting autonomous, controller-based, or cloud-based? Because that'll tell you where you're going to make your changes, modifications to uh, all the APs. Um, now, as far as mounting kits, uh, there's a couple of different options here. You've got mounting railings. So if you've got a drop ceiling, uh, usually you'll usually see a T-rail connector. If it's on a wall, there'll be some kind of mounting bracket, uh, whether it's uh, the brackets attached to the, to the wall and then the antennas attached to the bracket or whether the uh, 
uh, whole AP is attached to the wall uh, is your option. And then uh, sometimes you can mount, if it's most of the time I'm doing outside, I'm going to do a pole or a mast mount. And then you'll see some kind of uh, U-clamps that will clamp to the pole, uh, allow me to run you know, cables through. So one is just deciding where you're going to mount this stuff. Um, and of course, what do you take into consideration? What's my coverage? How many customers am I trying to serve? What's my coverage area? Um, what is antenna? What kind of antenna is this? It's an omni antenna. Which direction is it flowing? Do I want, where do I want to mount it? On the ceiling, on the wall? Uh, those are all choices you get to make um, when you're making that choice. So you just got to, you know, decide uh, on base everything we've discussed, how do you want to do this? You know, for example, if you're doing an indoor AP with integrated antennas, um, I mean, right now they're usually engineered to be optimized for ceiling mounts because that just seems to be in a normal standard office with, you know, you know, eight to 10, 12 foot ceilings, the antennas are engineered for that. Um, but if you're going to be outdoors, you're probably going to go pole mount. You're going to change a different antenna type. Uh, so you just want to make sure that based on what your coverage and service area is, you want to make sure that your coverage and your choice of APs and how you mounting all come together. And of course, being the person that's probably going to install this, you want to make sure based on how it's going to mount, you understand how it's going to mount, what kind of tools are going to be required um, before you get to the site. The last thing you want to do is get there and go, oh, I need one more cable. I need one more X. Um, doesn't really look good. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea of what to keep in mind for this chapter. Just one, you remember an AP supports different physical cap cap capabilities and you just got to select the one that matches your design requirements. Uh, AP support many different features related to performance, operation, management, and you just also got to match those to your design. Mounting of APs, it's going to vary uh, from to operate from installation to installation, whether it's uh, so you got to make sure that based on the AP, if it's going to be inside ceiling wall, is it going to be outside pole and mast? Uh, if it's a pole and mast, how tall is it going to be? You know, do I got to worry about wind loading? Do I got to worry about uh, FAA rules? You know, are you there know, height restrictions based on those are things you want to keep in mind. Um, when an AP is powered over Ethernet, you've got to make sure that the the link budget or the power budget is engineered to the point that there's enough power to power the AP. So don't exceed the Ethernet length requirements because that'll be the biggest thing. Um, power over Ethernet availability, you want to test it with a line tester to make sure that you've got enough power that's coming through. And then keep in mind on the different standards, the 802.3AF provides a maximum of 2.95 watts of power. And the 802.3AT provides 25.5 watts of power. So keep those things in mind and you will do fine. Have any questions, let me know. Have a nice day.